What do you think? I think we're dead meat. Real dead meat. You're dead meat! Go ahead and laugh, you guys. The final final little pass is a business. A dead meat. Hey everybody, James A. Janice here at Texas Frightmare 2018. This is the first horror convention I've been to outside of Los Angeles, and I'm loving it. Texas Frightmare is held at the Hyatt Regency at the Dallas-Fort Worth International Airport. It's a very cool hotel and a very cool setting for this expo. Texas Frightmare seems to be about the same size as Monster Palooza, the other annual horror convention I'm always trying to go to, but this convention seems to be more fan-oriented than industry-oriented, which they're both cool, but it makes for a fun, different experience. Of course, you got the usual stuff here. You got a whole a bunch of horror cosplayers, a lot of really cool costumes. Oh god. Oh god. Oh, is that Michael Myers or is that Bob? I don't know. Oh, no. The father is never far. Just look under your bed. <laughs> Ghostbags! <laughs> Tons of horror merchandise to buy, from toys to props to shirts, so many shirts. We checked out a lot of panels here. We saw the Friday the 13th panel with all the different Jason actors talking about their experiences being the man behind the mask. My boy Ted White was there. It was great to see him. <laughs> we also got to check out the Cenobite panel. It's the Cenobite celebration with the actors who played the Cenobites in Hellraiser 1 and 2. It was really nice to see them talk. They were all so well-spoken and 75% of them were proper British people. The Chucky panel was really cool because you had Don Mancini, the creator of the series, as well as Brad and Fiona Doriff. You had Alex Vincent and Christina Lee. Just so many people there talking about their experience with that series, which means a lot to me since I covered it so early on in Dead Meat. And then the Chucky, I, I didn't want to make the same movie as Brad Chucky, so I just like, I want to get even nuttier. I know a lot of people think I went too far. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people still like tweet me on Twitter, really looking forward to the new movie, but the saw panel was one of my favorite things to see you had the director of sauce two three and four darren lynn bowsman and then the actor who played Mark Hoffman, Costas Mandalore, and of course, Tobin Bell and Shawnee Smith, Jigsaw and Amanda themselves, talking about their relationship together and how good of friends they are, and it was really sweet to see. And my favorite thing to do so far is continuing these one-question interviews that I do with celebrities that I meet. It's really cool because you get to see just a window into their personality and see how they are and get to meet them real briefly. Hey, I'm here with Darren Lynn Bowsman, director of Sauce 2 through 4, three of my favorite of the Saw movies. Darren, I have a quick question for you. Yes. If you had to be in one Saw Trap from the movies that you directed, which would it be and why? Fuck no, I don't want to be in any Saw Trap. That is a horrible question. The answer is zero Saw Traps is what I want to be in. But if I had to... Yeah, if this little puppet guy rolled up and said, Hey, Darren, I want to play a game. What's it going to be? Probably the needle pit. The needle pit's horrific, but yeah. you're not really gonna die from it. And if you, I mean, I guess you could get hepatitis or something terrible. You know what? No, the answer is zero. I don't want to be in any saw trap. That's no the safest answer, answer that. that. I'm here with Costas Mandalore, the notorious detective Mark Hoffman from the Saw franchise. Costas, I've got a single question for you. You, uh, of course, were the apprentice to Jigsaw. If you could be the apprentice to any other horror movie killer, who would it be? That's a great question. Damn. How about Dracula? Oh, Dracula? Going for a classic? And second to him would be Bela Lugosi's Dracula. <laughs> so I guess it's Dracula. Just a bunch of Draculas. Okay. There's a sensuality to it. Mm -hmm. Not as horrific as this stuff. Yeah. You know, and it's legendary, so I guess, yeah. Hey, speaking of legendary, so are you and all your work in the Saw franchise. I think you were in more of the movies than anyone else besides Jigsaw. Apparently, yes, that's true. Yeah, you lasted a long time, man. I'd love to see a return, you know? 
I'll be back unless I play Dracula. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm here with Fiona Doroth, the amazing talent of Curse and Cult of Chucky. Fiona, one quick question. Sure. Chucky wants to be everyone's best friend, but if you could be the best friend of any horror movie villain, who would it be? Oh my God. Um, it, it does Spawn count? You know, Spawn from Hell? I think I think uh, that was the comic book that I collected as a kid. Yeah. He's just the tortured, sexy, hellish one that Ooh, okay. I, I think it would be Spawn. All right, I'm here with Don Mancini, the creator behind the Chucky franchise. And Don, you've written every single one of those movies. You've directed a bunch of them and you've done a great job. But my question is, if you could have any any film director, living or dead, direct the next Chucky movie that you write, who would it be? You know I'm going to pick someone dead because okay. I don't want to put myself out of a job. Sure, yeah, good call. I think I'd have to go with Hitchcock. I know yeah. this, like, it sounds really lame. There's got to be a more interesting... Kubrick? Just, you want to see a Kubrick Chucky no, movie or no? Just, you just take the fun out of it. The compositions are symmetrical. Yeah. And people are just like in beautiful rooms. That makes me think of a Wes Anderson Chucky movie, which would also Actually, be Wes Anderson. I shouldn't say it. No, that's <laughs> safe because he's never going to do it. Okay, sure. Wes Anderson. Hey, I'm here with Christina Least, star of Child's Play 2 and Cult of Chucky if you stick around after the credits. Christine, your character's sibling relationship with Andy is one of my favorite parts of the entire series. I actually feel like he really is my little brother. That's the weird thing. Not fictional. In real life, like I met him when he was seven years old, mm -hmm. and uh, and I've known him for 30, 37 now. I've known him. He, he just said tonight that his earliest memories are of me and Don Mancini. Like, Aww. He, like, so we feel like he's actual 30 year relationship with this person. And you've kept in touch with him all this all these years? I didn't. It was a big gap and about yeah. eight years ago I got back in touch with him and oh, now we've so been sweet. like like this and he feels like my real little brother. Well that's amazing. Yeah. And like I said, your relationship is one of the best parts of the series. Thank me, you. So. And I think that I think that's Part of why that is is because uh, it's a kid mm -hmm. saving a kid. So it's yeah. two little kids against the bad guy, which is a powerful thing for little kids to watch. And she was also a really early female heroine. That's a, I an love early, that. An early final girl. Yeah, you know? and a kick-ass one too. Yeah, thank yeah you. you were amazing. Thank so you. thank you so much, Christine. Yeah. I'm here with Kevin Yeager, makeup artist extraordinaire. Kevin, you created the Chucky doll. Yeah. You've worked on many of the Nightmare on Elm Street sequels. And I've just got to ask, Don Mancini keeps talking about this Freddy versus uh, Chucky movie possibility. If it came down to it, who would you want to see win? That's a toss-up. I know. I mean, for me, because I worked on both of them, so I would say, uh, well, today I'd say Chucky. You know, maybe if I talked to Robert England, he would change my mind. Right, I bet he could convince yeah, you otherwise. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm here with Brad Dorff, the voice of Chucky himself. Uh, Brad, Chucky is legendary, and part of the reason is your voice performance. I was just wondering, are there any voice artists or voice performances that uh, inspire you or that are your favorites? Um, I. You know, I kind of like uh, um, was just playing Chucky, so, it, you know. Also, Chelsea got to do a little interview with Jeremy Ray Taylor, Ben from It. All right, so Ben Hanscom is yes. my favorite character in the book It, and you did such a perfect job bringing him to life. Thank you very much. So I wanted to ask you, since the book It is so special to me, if you have any books that are really special to you. I'm not a huge reader, but there's one book that I just read that I really love. It's called A Separate Piece. It's it's definitely not a horror book. I can't handle it. I also see you have a YouTube channel. Do you want to give that a shout out? I do. It's called Just Being Jeremy. We'll put it somewhere on the screen, right here. <laughs> one of the highlights of my time here was meeting the legendary Clive Barker, making a rare appearance at a horror convention. I wasn't able to get a picture or anything with him, but that's okay. It was so cool just to talk to him and uh, to speak with him, and he's such a kind, gentle man. There goes Billy on a tricycle, squeaking away. And I bought a book of his art and had him sign it, and I can't wait to just display that at my home for the rest of my life. A really cool thing about traveling to Dallas is getting to stay with Found Flakes. We've stayed at his house the last two nights, and we've been to the convention with him. Right now he's in the IT panel, but I love this guy. He's basically just another copy of me in Texas, and it's so cool to hang out with him and just see all the similarities that we have and all the same interests. Hey, I found this guy. You found the flicks. Yeah. Hey, man. You took me here, so thanks. Of course, yes. It was your first experience at Frightmare. How was it? How, did, how was your time at this week? It's been great. The guests yeah. are awesome. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Who's your Who's the favorite person that you met? I mean, Clyde Barker was my number one. Right. So that was pretty incredible. But yeah, Nightbreed's one of my favorite movies ever. So I got my poster signed for that. Got that taken care of, but yeah. Is that going to be in any videos? It, it has to be for tax purposes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Best panel that you went to? Ooh, that's tough. I actually really like the Ron Perlman one, but the It Kids was really, were really good too. Them It Kids, they dance like clowns. That's right, yeah, little Georgie could do the Pennywise dance like nobody's business. <laughs> I kind of want to see James do it though. I was going to get you to do oh, it. Oh, you're going to get me to do it. I did it in my we, video. Can we both do it? <laughs> Thanks.
All right. Just subscribe I'll, to Found Flicks. Yeah. Do and, that. And Dead Me, too. Oh, He's thanks. Good. There's so much cool stuff here to buy and to see and people to meet, but even if you don't want to drop a ton of money on all that stuff, I think it's great to just come here and be surrounded by people who love horror. Like at any horror convention, it's just really cool to find more and more of these out here and to see more and more people from all different regions of the United States and all over the world coming to celebrate this genre. I love being here, man. I love being surrounded by this. It's, it's my favorite place to be are these horror conventions. So if you're in the Dallas area, make sure you check out Texas Frightmare next year. And if you're anywhere where there's a horror convention, look them up. There might be one in your area. Check it out and go there because these are the best places to be for a horror fan. I hope to be at more of these and I hope to meet you at some of them because I love meeting fans here too. So until then, I'm James A. Janice. This has been Dead Meat at Texas Frightmare. This is it. This is your last shot. You're no more shots. And we didn't get the shot where the back ever got the back of the head. And so we said, let's lock all the producers out. We really push the walls together and screwdrive them in. And here the producers go, oh, yeah, that's a wrap.